Okay, hey everybody. Following up on yesterday's meeting, so we had some work workload allocation, uh, just namely Abe working on extruder, me I'm working on various things, Chaz Universal Controller, Jose website, Cedric, I'm waiting for Cedric to follow up whether he's done. Frank, Roberto, and Lashla were making some progress on on the language agnostic instructionals and then we were left with um, Io was working on a simplified frame for, for D3D made of plastic, uh, PVC and Cassie and Israel I was going to follow up so here it is. Um, one thing we can all organize around is cleaning up and this applies to some of the former people too, uh, people doing other things, cleaning up the part library. So let's take a look at that. So this is the part library, D3D part library on the 3D printer and I added uh, stuff re regarding CAD standards, like what we want to have all to to have effective CAD standards. And what I've done is, um, what we want to go with right now is is organize what we have already, and there's some optimizations and things to do there, like, for example, based on IO's feedback that, oh, it was so impossible to work with uh, FreeCAD, part of the work there is to organize the files in a manageable way, and that means paying attention to memory size. So one task that we want to have people do, and this is actually a request, this is to to Io, to Cassie, and to Israel, uh, since you're the newer people, but I think you can uh, help a lot by cleaning up or organizing what we have already. So a lot of the stuff that we have already is represented on a D3D integration page. These are the modules, uh, so download these and check out what we have here. Typically we have a simple and a full version of each module. The full version has the details, uh, mean, meaning things like bolts, and the simple version is intended to be stripped down so that when you put this into larger files or a complete file, the file won't bog down. Or even think about it as this, what if you're trying to do a CAD picture of the 3D printer, the extruder, and, and multiple, actually multiple machines in one CAD file? Well, it's going to be pretty much, I guarantee, impossible if you don't strip down everything possible from a given file. So here's the here's the deal. Uh, so this is the spreadsheet on the on the page, the part library page. Now this is the spreadsheet, and in it, so this is um, IOCASI Israel, primarily for you guys, but also for the other people on the team. So take a look at this. What we have already in this spreadsheet here is the 40 unique parts of the entire 3D printer. So one through, th it's actually 39 right now, uh, say about 40. But we've got the, these are the purchasing files, purchasing uh, links. What we wanna do is um, in this spreadsheet, organize what we have and what we don't have. So here, what we wanna start with is put in a link to the part file and get this from uh, the part library page. So if we go back to the part library, a lot of the parts are here already in the gallery in the part library page, so you can cut and paste them into here. But we need some information about that. We want to start actually optimizing for file size. So in, in this here, put down what the memory size, the file size, like 50k, 100k, 1 megabyte, and this is where our optimization starts kicking in because here I actually did conditional formatting here. So for example, for the complete machine file, the overall file is 29 megabytes and that's a red because 29 megabytes is pretty slow to handle. I would say we keep the limit down to five megabytes for anything. That means in a complete machine, whatever comes to make up the machine, the sub-assemblies and the parts have to be stripped down or simplified. So we start with the parts, the individual parts, but also know that some of the in, the 40 parts are assemblies already. Like for example, there's um, the extruder, which we buy as a whole piece, so that the file for that we already have, we don't strip that down into parts. Well, we actually did that. But anyway, put the size in K down, and if it's above, uh, for a single part, it shouldn't be more than like 100 or 1 megabyte. If it is, let's simplify it. So here I have a column G for simplified file link. If the file is too big, strip it down. Take things out. Uh, and what can you take out? I'm going to give you an example right here. So here we have an example of uh, the carriage assembly. Let me put the carriages back in. Uh, so this is an example of why we want to strip things down. So take a look at this. 
this is the the simple version of the axis the x-axis it's actually about one megabyte and on the other side I have let me show you the other file um, which is the full one here look at that you can kind of see in the video that now I can't it's it's actually harder to move it it's it skips around more it's not lightweight as this one where you see how easily I can move it back and forth this one see how it the, the step between calculating the next position position and so forth is much bigger what's the difference between the two files so this one is five megabytes actually but that's getting heavy um, the lighter version took out all the bolts so you see all the bolts are here and the simple version the bolts have been stripped out but look at this the simple version also has these threaded threaded bolts here already they take up tons of memory so strip that out as well that's not stripped out so when we go back to uh, the table here once we get to the assembly so here are the assemblies in the table like like this is the x-axis so put the link in here and put in the size and then the simplified is already there but now we know this can get more simplification like take out the threads here for example and then if you look at in, what's inside here there's the pulley well when you're working with the with the assembly here you can hardly see the pulley you don't even know it's there just take it out make it lighter what else what else can we strip off I, I see in this part here look at that there's that that whole uh, drive cog on the motor we don't need that simplify it so basically the contest here is okay take the existing file and strip down what you can and uh, so I'm gonna put that back in strip down what you can and save it in the file version don't start a new file the, the version history on the wiki is such that you can upload a new version of the file so do that and then the next person can come along and maybe okay I don't even like this I don't like the fact that this has all the all the bolt holes all those holes just strip it down to the very block like the simplest version of this would be just a simple cubic block and the rods go into it so we can play as much as we want to with the simplification but at the end of the day instead of using this is like one megabyte we can probably get this down to like a hundred K and what's that mean that means if you're building an actual whole pr printer it's gonna be super fast to design redesign parts in the overall complete assembly file because I can tell you right now once we had everything including wiring it's going to be just impossible and this is not because of FreeCAD even it's like I would say any program if you have the full detail in any program down to the detail you're never going to be able to handle handle the full thing so it's always about taking a certain level of abstraction stripping out details as much as you can so the idea is let's go to back to the wiki so say we've got um, I'm going to show, okay, D3D left axis, okay, open that up, that's a wiki page, it's got the version history mm -hmm. here, so what you do here is upload a new version of this file, keep the old stuff there, like say this file right here, just keep it there, all you're doing is adding a new version, so, so take that file, and like you see here, 4.7, well this is the full file, so maybe this is the one we want to keep, but for the other one, which was supposed to be the simplified, and it was still like 1.5 meg, uh, start stripping it down down to like super simple blocky structures mm -hmm. they're going to be useful somewhere because if you want to do a quick super quick model of, of a 3d printer or or mess around with it um, there's always a use for simpler files so, so basically we can have in this version history you can download whichever file you need like in the comment or in the the editing this page you can leave comments saying okay this version is stripped down to the v very basic cubic blocks no holes no nothing you know we can have that so here we can upload more things and it doesn't hurt anybody we just put more versions that are as simple and a person who's going to be designing they're going to download the file they want at the level of simplicity that they want here so that's the that's the general idea so that applies to let's go back in here so that applies especially to the assemblies like the y-axis x-axis z-axis uh, cable chain like that's a really painful thing to do heated bed extruder assembly uh, because the point is the complete machine right now if you go look at it uh, in a link that's it's 29 meg it shouldn't be like if we want to make it practical probably things like IO had issues manipulating stuff and designing in it you want to be crisp super fast so that's that um, next part uh, to this is for everybody now exploded part animation source files we have a whole page of exploded part animations which are so this is the place where uh, you can pull down the assemblies this is the d3d integration page this is what I just showed 
Now here's the D3D page, which has got that's our working page with all the team members and everything else. I'm going to close that. Okay, this is development team log. Active developers are here. I notice Cassie's log has not been started. Cassie, please start it if or link it properly there. Um, here's our here are all the the explode part animation assembly videos. Beautiful work here. Uh, once again, uh, so take a look at all these. Let's document them all in here, as in that's the assembly name. Uh, there's three assets that we, we have already requested for each of those files. So you've got the video link, like uh, the YouTube videos, uh, but then uh, include the FreeCAD file. I know this is scattered throughout people's logs. Some of this info may be there, or maybe some people haven't uploaded it. But the FreeCAD file link that you use to generate that video and the Caden Live source file. So this is for everybody. All the 12 videos that are here, anyone who did that, please go back in here and put those three source files so we have one stop shop for where everything is and from this spreadsheet we can then download the files rework them upgrade them so this is now for the future of the project we're saying we've got this all the source files that people can readily manipulate instead of leafing through everybody's log and so forth this is one one place to organize everything and the last thing now that we're starting the language agnostic instructionals we have uh, once again um, the 12 different ones that we have here already we might add one or two more but uh, put them all in here and then for the instructional files put in your source files like the FreeCAD file that you're working from which would be the the isometric view uh, video that doesn't really apply here Caden Live doesn't apply here either but um, so just make sure you have the uh, instructions what, what would apply here actually is instead of video the FreeCAD well the FreeCAD file does apply so FreeCAD here then the Google Doc where you're editing your actual instructional and then maybe maybe some video might apply as far as how you did that instructional or something like that but we don't worry about that yet I'm gonna go back to the basic cleanup here so the last com here so I, I have here CAD file link size of the overall the, the big file the simplified file which we're going to keep reworking and reworking to simpler versions and then the size so basically as we go look through this table we can say okay which are the hogs that we should be able to to lower the memory of and so forth and then file build documentation that's like the ultimate product here which for every single thing that we did and this applies more to the uh, assemblies even though though the parts some of the parts it also applies like where'd you get the screw file well that could be either the workbench or a McMaster car uh, uh, supply McMaster car file that's that's a sourcing place for a lot of different elements where they have all the free get all the step files that you can download but the file build documentation would apply specifically more to the assemblies where how did you create that assembly in the FreeCAD? It's important to know because then we want to verify, uh, have that documented so we can verify whether a file is, is done according to best practices like low memory size, just proper order of making things in there so it's easy to understand, proper constraints, proper everything. So we want to get that going for every file down the road and that's, you know, we, uh, that's just FYI for future work as we go forward, as we get more people I do want to document how every file was built so we can learn for example like if someone wants to modify the cable chain which is a really complex thing or the belt which is complex here we would have supporting documentation so we don't have to figure out how the belt was done like the you know the the part history like you have the the tree view of any any file it's like it can get really complicated but a person should go into a file and with the ass assistance of that video be able to navigate like what exactly how the structure of the CAD relates to the tree view so that someone can modify it because the key is modification and so forth so that sums up pretty much what I wanted to follow up with and I want to ask the three new people uh, whether they can start working on the uh, populating this table so there's a link so this should be completely full here CAD file link just note the size of the file the existing simplified files if they exist or not um, and then the reduction of the file size by stripping things down this is like the main thing uh, column H which is the simplified file link which is once you put it in there and it's got the version of history so you don't have to update that but then you can we can look at the the memory size we can evaluate it and see if this is small enough so that at the end of the day 
the entire assembly could be way less than 29,000 kilobytes, 29 meg, it would be much smaller, and it could be an ongoing exercise where you can say, oh, well, if I actually change this, that, that makes the file smaller, but it doesn't really de decrease any from the quality of understanding what the overall file is showing and so forth. So that's the assignment. Please uh, review this video and let me know what you think. I'm posting this on the, on the network and we can get the discussion going on how to go forward in organizing the CAD so it becomes really user-friendly and people can download it to make new versions of the machines. Thank you.